Okay, so students, I apologize for overlooking these logarithmic differentiation problems. I think when I recorded that, it must have got gotten chopped off when I was trying to edit that somehow. So I will go through on page uh, seven, I'll go through those three examples. So I, I took this, this is kind of a good explanation of how you do logarithmic differentiation. And what we tend to use this for is pretty complicated expressions where we can use properties of logs. So one of the key things that you're going to use a lot of times, so there's really three properties. If you have the log of x times y, then you can break that up into the log of ln x plus ln y. And it's usually a little bit easier to do a derivative when it's just sums and differences than it is when you have a product. And the same idea applies to this. If you have a log of something over something, two functions divided, then you can go ln of the top minus L on the bottom. So I reviewed that a little bit earlier in this section. And the third rule that you use all the time on log dif differentiation is if you have a log of some function to a power, you can bring that down in front. So, uh, whoops, so that would be N times ln of X. So these are just your basic properties of logarithms, and X and Y can be functions, okay? So this is typically kind of what you go through here. The first thing you do is you start off these problems always by just taking the log of both sides. Okay, you do that. And the purpose of doing this is to use these properties so the, so the derivative is easier. This derivative would be a little more complicated without logarithmic differentiation. So this actually simplifies the process. So I do the log properties. So since I have a log of a fraction... I do this property right here. I do the log of x minus 2 to the second minus the log of the square root. Now, they've kind of, in this example, I didn't really show this step, so you could write this like this if you want to. This is really ln x minus 2 to the second minus ln, and then I'm going to write that as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half, and then that gets brought down to give this and then the one half gets uh, brought down to give that. Okay, so that's what you do. You once you take the log of both sides, you want to use these log properties over here to break this thing up. Then you do the derivative of both sides, and you do this implicitly. So when we do the derivative of ln y, we know the derivative of ln is one over the function. That's one over y times y prime, because you're doing this implicitly. The derivative of of 2 ln x minus 2 is 2 times 1 over x minus 2. And then the derivative of this is 1 half, 1 over the function. And then the chain rule says you got to do the derivative of what's inside. So that is just basically the derivative of the log. Then what you end up doing is you end up simplifying if you can. So what I did on, on this is I just uh, multiplied that to get 2 over x minus a half. The, and what happens here is the 2's cross out, so I end up with minus x over x squared plus 1. And then what you want to do is you want to solve for y. Okay, so actually I didn't show this step, and I should. So what you do now is if you multiply both sides of this equation by y, then you would have y prime by itself. So then you would have 2 over x minus 2 minus x over x squared plus 1. And then what you do is that y, don't leave the y it is, the way it is, plug back into the original. So see, y is this thing right here. So that plugs back in. So for your final answer, you would have this, and then you would have uh, x minus 2 to the second over square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, that's just kind of for you to refer to as the process of logarithmic differentiation. Okay, so I'll move to the next page, then I'll do these examples. It looks like on the video I did this one, but I'll do it again. So let's run through the process you do, and I'll write down the steps on this. So step one, what you always want to do is you want to take the natural log of both sides of the equation. So you kind of do the, the algebra part of this problem before you get into the calculus, okay? So you want to go ahead and do that. We'll do the ln of y equals the ln 
of x to the second cosine x. So we start there, and then what you're going to do is use log properties before you get into the calculus. So we'll have ln y, just bring that down, and then remember the key thing here is if you have an ln of two functions multiplied, which we have here, then just break it up into the ln of the first plus the ln of the second. Okay, so you want to do that. See, this is two functions, right? x squared, and do that. We're not ready to do the derivative yet. So we write ln of x to the second plus ln of cosine x like that. So I'm applying that formula right there. Okay, second thing it shows up a lot is if you have ln of some function to the n power, you bring that down. Now, this is not doing a derivative. This is just doing a, um, a property of a log. So you do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is just bring the 2 down. So I'll have ln y equals... 2 comes down, like that. Okay, now that's step one, is to take the log of both sides and use these properties to expand, and that's ultimately what makes the derivative easier on logarithmic differentiation. So that's step one. That's using logarithm properties. Step two is we're going to do the derivative, and we're going to do that implicitly. Okay, so we got to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the derivative with respect to x of both sides. We're going to take the derivative d dx of ln of y. Then we'll do the derivative, again, d dx of everything on the right side, like this. And uh, you're going to be working with log uh, the derivatives of natural logarithms. <laughs> so what you got to know is you got to know this. Two things. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. That's a rule that we learned. And then if you're do, dealing more with the chain rule, if you're doing the logarithm of f of x, then it goes like this. You do 1 over the function, and then by the chain rule, you multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so that's the rule that you're going to use. Okay, that's how you do a derivative of a logarithm. Okay, so it goes like this. The derivative of ln is 1 over y, but since these variables don't match, you can either write this as dy over dx, or I'm just going to write that as y prime. Okay, that's real important that you introduce that in there, because <clears throat> ultimately we've got to find what y prime is. Okay, now we do the derivative. Derivative of 2 ln x is just 2 times 1 over x. Okay, now again, when we're doing a, a derivative of a log of a function, two things, one over the function times derivative of the function. So we do one over cosine, and then we got to do the derivative of the cosine, which you can do that in your head if you want to, but you got to do a chain rule when you're doing that. So let's move on from here. We'll have one over y times y prime, and then I'm going to write this as two over x, and I'm going to write this as 1 over cosine. And then again, the other thing that you got to use, and there's all these different derivative rules going on, so the derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine x. Right? Right, so we do that. So we just put that in like that. And then one other thing you got to notice, well, there's a trig identity. If you have the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. So that's a tangent right there. It's a negative tangent. So next step I'm going to write is 1 over y times y prime is equal to 2 over x. And then this is minus sine over cosine, so it's minus tangent of x. Do you have to do that? No, but you should because it's easier. It simplifies the expression for you. Okay, so that's step two. Okay, we've done the derivative of both sides. Step three, what we always do is we solve for y prime, okay? So let's just write down what we had. We had 1 over y times y prime. That's equal to 2 over x minus tangent of x. So all you're really doing on this is you're getting rid of y. You want that 1 over y to go away, so you multiply both sides by y to make that go away, all right? So write down what you have. What we have is we have y prime equals y times 2 over x 
minus tangent of x. Now, we're not done because your answer doesn't need to have a y in it. It just needs to have x's in it. So now what you do is you go back to the beginning of the problem. And see this thing right here? That's what y is. y is x squared cosine x. So you're just going to plug in there. You're going to take that thing and plug it in there. And then that's how you get your final answer. So basically, you always end up these problems by plugging in y. And all that is is that's just the original uh, problem that you're working with. And then you write your answer. You don't have to do a lot of simplification on these problems either. So you get y1 equals y, but y is x squared cosine of x. And then just the rest of it is 2 over x minus tangent of x like that. Okay, so that would be your final answer to your problem right there. Okay, logarithmic differentiation. So you want to know how to do one of these for your test two. And uh, that, these, when I say logarithmic differentiation, you've got to run through this procedure. Okay, let's do this second one. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do on this second one, <clears throat> we're doing the derivative. Let's just write this as y equals x to the eighth cosine to the third x all over square root of x minus one. Okay. And again, step one is we do ln of both sides. Always start that way. Okay, so we're going to do ln of y equals ln of this whole thing. And I'm going to write this as x to the 8th, and you just might see it better if I write it this way, cosine of x to the 3rd, and then let's write that as x minus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, and that's what we're going to do is we're going to use our log properties to put this together. <coughs> so here's the log properties. Don't forget we also have, <coughs> excuse me, Okay, I've been battling a cold for the last couple of weeks and still coughing a little bit. Okay, so the other thing that we have is we have ln of f of x over g of x. You just subtract. So this is just kind of the things that you usually learn in pre-calc or college algebra. So this is a fraction, see? So you want to break it up like this. Okay, so you just bring down the ln y. Then we'll have ln x to the eighth cosine of x to the third minus ln uh, x minus one to the one half. Okay. Now notice here this is a product, so you want to use this property. Break that up into the sum of logs. So we'll just bring this down. You'll have ln y equals, and then this becomes ln of x to the eighth plus ln of cosine of x to the third minus ln of x minus one to the one half. So that goes like that. Now use this property. Whenever you have an exponent, you can bring it down. Okay, so what we do is we'll do this. This is ln y equals eight times ln of x. Again, I'm not doing a derivative. I'm just doing these log properties. Then plus 3 times ln cosine of x, and then minus 1 half ln of x minus 1. A lot of times I see students subtract 1 from the exponent because you're thinking of doing a derivative, but you're not. So that's step 1, as always. Do log of both sides. Use these three properties to expand things out as far as you can. Okay, and when you get to step two, then you're going to do the derivative, and you do this implicitly. implicitly. Okay, so I do the derivative of the left side, and then I do the derivative of the right side. Most of that you'll be able to do in your head, and it's just applying these basic properties of derivatives that we've learned. So we'll do the derivative of 8 ln x plus 3 ln of cosine of x minus 1 half ln x minus 1. So it's real important when you do log differentiation that you bring those exponents down before you do that derivative. Okay. All right, so what's the derivative of an ln of y? Uh, it's 1 over y. You know, that's the rule we learned. 
But we're doing it implicitly, so we have to multiply by y prime. Okay, now we just work on the right side. So that's 8, derivative of ln of x, so 1 over x. And you have plus 3, derivative of ln cosine of x. That's a chain rule, so it's 1 over the function times the derivative of the function. So you'd have 1 over cosine x times the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Okay, same thing over here. we got minus 1 half. The derivative of ln of a function is always 1 over x minus 1 times the derivative of that function. So the derivative of x minus 1 is 1, number in front of x. Okay, so now I clean this up. I get 1 over y times y prime. This is 8 over x here. And see, this is a tangent right there again. So negative sine over cosine is a tangent. So we would have minus 3 tangent of x. And then here we'd have minus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. So that is the implicit differentiation on that problem then. Okay. All right, step 3, solve for y prime. Okay, so we just do this. Okay, and you can kind of do this in your head. So I'll, I guess I'll write this down. It's just 1 over y times y prime. Right side is 8 over x minus 3 tangent of x minus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. Okay, and then what you want to do is multiply this side by y and that side by y. Okay, the reason that works is because it gets y prime by itself. Now you can write your answer. So you just kind of plug in for y. Don't forget to do that part of the problem. So this is y. Well, y is this thing. That's the original thing right there. So then the final answer we would just write as y prime equals y, which is the original problem, x to the eighth cosine cubed x over square root of x minus 1 times all this stuff. <clears throat> 8 over x minus 3 tangent x minus 1 over 2x minus 1. Okay, so that's all that would do. Right, and that is your answer to your problem. See, it's the same procedure. And on these problems, you get kind of complicated looking answers. <coughs> but generally, when you do that last step, you don't need to simplify. Just leave that alone from there. Okay. All right, so that's the process. Log of both sides. Derivative implicitly. Solve for y prime. Plug back in y. That's what you did. Four-step process, basically. Okay, I'll go ahead and go through this one. I think my video had this <coughs> on here, but I'll go ahead and do it again. Okay, so step one, what we're going to do is log of both sides. We do ln y equals ln 1 plus x, and then the exponent is a sine x, which is perfectly okay. And we're going to do log property. So anytime that you have ln of a function to a power, the power comes down. So we just write that as sine x times ln 1 plus x. Okay, now there's nothing you can break up. Sometimes I see students want to do this. A lot of times students want to go ln 1 plus ln x. That is not a property. Don't get that confused with ln of 1 times x. Well, that is ln 1 times plus ln x, but not this. You can't do that. I'll leave it alone. So what you're going to do in step two is you're going to do the derivative. So we're going to do the derivative with respect to x of ln y. And on the right-hand side, we do d dx, and we're going to do the derivative of sine x times ln 1 plus x, okay, like that. Now, when you do this derivative, that's a product rule. See, this is two functions, so you're going to have to do the product rule on that, and the product rule is the one that goes first times derivative of second plus second times derivative of first. Or you can do that backwards. Okay? Just got to do the first and the derivative of second and the second derivative of first in whatever order you want to. Okay? I, for some reason, I always do it in this order. All right, so what you'll have is this will be 1 over y times y prime. Don't forget the y prime because that's what you're trying to find. 
Now we go to the product rule. So we'll do the first. You can do this in your head, but I'm going to write down derivative of second and backwards plus the second and then times the derivative of the first. And again, you can skip a step by doing all that in your head if you want to. So this would be 1 over y times y prime. Bring down the sine x. The derivative of ln of 1 plus x is 1 over the function. And by chain rule, the derivative of that function would be 1. So you don't really have to put that there. I'm just mostly emphasizing that. And then bring down the ln <coughs> 1 plus x. And then the derivative of the sine we learned is the cosine. All right, now I'm going to just kind of clean this up a little bit. So I have 1 over y times y prime. I can put this all together, just kind of multiply that straight across, and I get sine x over 1 plus x. And over here, I just get ln. I'd probably put the cosine in front, but you don't have to. To me, it just looks better. So I've got cosine of x times ln of 1 plus x. Okay, so that's step two. And then step three, you're going to solve for y prime. And you can kind of learn to do this in your head because you can skip a few steps. So that's 1 over y times y prime equals sine x over 1 plus x plus cosine x times ln 1 plus x. And then what you can do is just multiply both sides by y. It gets rid of that, and if you do that, make sure the whole entire side is multiplied by y. So we get y prime <coughs> equals y times sine x over 1 plus x plus cosine x times ln 1 plus x. And then the last step, what do you always do? Plug in y, exactly. So see, here's y. That needs to plug in there, and then you got your answer. So you got y prime equals... 1 plus x to the sine x power times the rest of the stuff. Okay, so it goes like that. <clears throat> okay, a little bit of practice. Okay, it's not that hard to do. I mean, it's basically you got to know your logarithm rules and your derivative rules real well. And you'll get really messy answers on these problems, too. That's okay. That's just kind of the way logarithmic differentiation works. Okay, so that's it. All right, hopefully that'll help you out, and you want to study over those and make sure you know how to do those. Okay.